All right, thanks. Have a good night. Right, Appreciate see you, it. Both. Take care. Why don't we take a minute real quick and plug Bill Winter's YouTube channel? He mentioned it on last week's show. Sure. Um, yeah, if you guys just search Bill Winter's football on YouTube for our listeners, you know, tuning in with us tonight, you'll get to see some cool highlights from when he played with – played in, uh, you know, I believe he played with the Edmonton Eskimos at one point. You know, he played – he had some he time. He played his, everywhere. He had some time in the CFL. So uh, he, he uploads full game footage on there. You get to see that kind of grainy um, Polaroid-like – game footage from the early 80s so if you ever want to see anything cool like that you know give bill a follow on twitter he's a you know follows youtube channel subscribe to him there he's got some good stuff on there i mean you know takes you back to some of the forgotten years in uh football's history obviously it's not the nfl but still pretty cool bill's always a good talk you know he makes makes always makes some good points scott anything you want to add about him no go ahead i mean bill's a great friend to me and that's why he has a show just like you yeah no yeah bill you know bill winners is one of the best friends here at the uh, South Florida Tribune. So, you know, we always love talking to him, and it'll be interesting to see how he is with those predictions. I'm surprised he, uh, you know, him and Mel had some very differing views on that Clemson game. Obviously, Mel thought Wake Forest was going to win, but, you know, Bill comes out and says Clemson's <laughs> going to blow him well, out. So. Well, sometimes i got to get my boys to go ahead and, uh, get, you know, it's, it's okay to get, you know, it's, it's there's nothing wrong with guys – going from pro to college to get a different perspective. And I think that's what I was intrigued about asking. But I don't know. I think Clemson's going to win this one's handily, too. So yeah. so I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the Michigan uh, Michigan State games because I have a vested interest in I'm a Wolverines guy. I, I think the Wolverines are going to blow out Michigan State. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking at probably 35 to 15 in favor of the Wolverines. Is Michigan even ranked this season? Or? Well, yeah, yeah, the Wolverines are ranked. Yeah, uh, the, the Wolverines are ranked fifteenth. I'm surprised Harbo hasn't, you know, taken them to a, a championship game yet. I, I, I mean, that's obviously Clemson, Ohio State, and Alabama are the closest thing we've seen to college football dynasties. And you have to use that term loosely when you talk college because of the revolving door of player personnel there. So, all right. Well, uh, we uh, well here we are with the sports exchange with our closer. No, I'm not talking about Raleigh Fingers, Mariano Trep, Rivera. Mariano Rivera. We're talking Xavier McKnight. Xavier, welcome back to the sports exchange, little buddy. What you got, buddy? Well, before we get to the business at hand, let me say that uh, I am feeling very ecstatic right now about some NBA news. That's not the NBA your wait to the end so you can give us this stuff right xavier good stuff buddy the headband's not going away right xavier <laughs> uh, absolutely not and I'm, I'm looking forward to monday i'm looking forward to seeing what carmelo's going to bring to the table it's a nine guaranteed contract so it's a win-win situation for everybody involved carmelo gets back in the nba the portland trailblazers don't have to pay him any money and there's another player in the league on a non-guaranteed contract right now Dwight Howard. That's working out pretty well for the Lakers. Mm -hmm. I must say so myself. Yeah, no, he's been great off the bench for them at the center position, you know, following those games. I mean, you know, LeBron's got everybody firing on all cylinders so far this year. And I don't I don't believe Anthony Davis played last night, but they still look really good right now. Yeah, yeah well, they rested him due to a shoulder and a rib injuries, and they're not major injuries. They're minor injuries, but I'm glad they rested him. Okay, well, you know what? I'm glad they that some interesting breaking news. We don't give the NBA a lot of coverage, but at least you did. So let's. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, well, I mean, Anthony will get b buried up in the Pacific Northwest at Rip City, so no media coverage. Whatever he does, he does. But more power to him. So let's talk about something we, we spoke about on Tuesday night with Tony Larusa uh, joining the LA Angels and get into the dynamics of that whole situation. You know, I still feel the same way that I felt about it on Tuesday. Once again, when it comes to baseball, I believe he is the MLB's equivalent to what Jerry West is to the NBA. I really believe the Angels are building something special to now go around the three-time American League most valuable player. 
player, Mike Trout. I just thought I would include that line in there because I was surprised to see that he ended up winning this year's AL MVP, but I know exactly what those votes came based off of. Had he not gone down with his injury in September when he did, there's no question his numbers would have been greater than any other player in that league from an RBI standpoint, a home run standpoint, and maybe even a batting average standpoint. So you have the best player in baseball to now build around, and you have three great baseball minds in the room. And I'm just ready to see what else is going to happen now. The offseason and free agency are officially underway. Will Smith signing a deal. No, I'm not talking about Will Smith, the actor, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Will Smith, the baseball player, the former closer of the San Francisco Giants. He signed a three-year deal with the Atlanta Braves this afternoon for around $39 million. Now, despite him being the closer in San Francisco, the word out of Atlanta is that Mark Melanchon will remain on as the closer for the team. But... Lewis, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case for most of the season once they get back underway starting in April. No, you have two different types of pitchers there. Melanson, as we understand, which we need to understand, is he came up through the ranks with Houston, really burst onto the scene there. He had some struggles with the Yankees and the Red Sox, but he found his niche in Pittsburgh. There was a four-year stretch, I believe it was from 2011 to 14. He averaged a one. He had like a 185 ERA over that span. I mean, that's you know, it's over 200 games pitched out of. The, the Pittsburgh bullpen. That's when you know, obviously everything was clicking on all cylinders with you know Clint Hurdle and Co. and Ray Searidge, pitching coach over there. He's kind of like a low nineties cutter slider kind of guy. Whereas with Will Smith, he's a lefty with fastball curveball. Very, very common, you know, a atyp- uh, typical delivery for a left handed reliever. But I, I think I, I personally love the move. He turned down a low higher AAV with a qualifying offer from the Giants. But the Giants' perspective, they get a draft pick compensation for that. Bumgarner's probably going to turn down his draft his qualifying offer as well so San Francisco benefits from this but I think the Braves benefit from it as well because their bullpen was really an Achilles heel and what did them in in the playoffs in 2019 but yeah I love this move Xavier I mean I can't can't agree with you more I think it's very smart on their end to go after and sign him and Alex Anthopoulos I applaud him for the move that he made today now with the Tony La Russa moves that are happening there is one name in particular and Lewis you threw this out on Tuesday I believe and now I'm actually seeing this more and more. The Yankees have come out and already said they plan on going after him as well. The Braves, they plan on going after him. He's main priority. But it wouldn't surprise me if Madison Bumgarner does remain in California and he's actually an angel next year. It wouldn't shock me either. We have to take this into account. San Francisco, now I believe it's called Oracle Park, is a very good pitcher's park as is Angel Stadium. Obviously, Mike Trout makes it look a little bit more ridiculous given the way that he's played over there. But, you know, Mike Trout is, in my opinion, maybe the best player I've ever seen this side of Barry Bonds. So, look, it doesn't it doesn't shock me. Bumgarner is probably going to go somewhere, I think, like Atlanta. I'd like to see him in, in with the Angels, though. I think he'd give them an established ace. And then if you go after, I mean, say they get lucky and they sign a Garrett Cole and they, you know, they're going to have to overpay a little bit. But I think Artie Moreno's okay with doing that I you know I think they're you know I think they're going to be in good shape next year do I think they're a playoff team no but at the same time like you know you add a veteran presence like Bumgarner and you give him given his postseason pedigree you know the steps that Mike Trout has to take to get a ring get a lot easier that way well I'll say this too when it comes down to the Angels I don't believe there'll be a playoff team next year but no matter what the team looks like next season no matter the moves they make this offseason I'm not going to question the plan of Tony La Russa, Joe Madden, Mickey Callaway, and anybody else in that front office. Those are guys that know what they're doing. They know how to build baseball teams. They know how to build championship teams. So I'm not going to question that at all. I'm just going to be looking mainly to see what the culture seems to feel like or what it may look like just from the outside looking in going forward with that organization. We know they had a very nasty, tragic, and ugly situation take place earlier this year in the summer with the Tyler Stagg death that took place. And that investigation has slowly quieted down. And once they're able to officially overcome that, I believe they can start building this team in the direction that they truly want to build it in. Scott, let's uh, get some thoughts from you on this as well. Scott's actually MIA. He's a few... uh... 
he, had, well, he actually just came back right now, but you know he'll give his thoughts on that in a second. Scott, we're we're talking real quick, and I'll give you a brief overview. Um, we're talking about how obviously the Angels were dealt a tough situation at the outset of right. July with the unfortunate passing of Tyler Skaggs due to a fentanyl and alcohol mixture uh, right. given to him by what they believe to be a team doctor. Do you think, obviously, with the hiring of Madden Callaway and now La Russa, do you think they're building a special culture over there in do I think down by no, Disneyland? Do or, I think? Yeah. No, I know they are. There you go. I mean, that's all there is. Clear. That, that's all there is to it. Yeah, without a doubt. Anytime you can put together Joe Madden and Tony La Russa in the same building, and I and again, I, I'll point out to you, I worked with Mickey Callaway this past spring mm-hmm. up in Port St. Lucie. You got a lot of good baseball minds, and who's to say how many other baseball minds you're going to have in there? Yeah, I'll be curious to see how they round out the coaching staff. And Xavier, it's important to note that <coughs> Mickey Callaway was the manager for Jacob Degrom those two seasons when he won right. the Cy Award. And obviously, I mentioned before he was with those pitching greats in Cleveland. Obviously, Carrasco, Salazar, right. Kluber, and now the emer- now the emergence of you know Mister uh, Long Hair. God, I'm forgetting his name. Obviously, Trevor Bauer and right. um, Mike. Mike Clevenger, I'm sorry. There you That's go. All right. So you know Callaway, you know he bleeds pitching, and I think Madden's obviously got a good guy to work with there. I think they're going to do a lot of surprising things this year. But I know you wanted to talk about. Obviously, a report came out the other day that Garrett Cole doesn't plan on signing until after the new year. Yes. As far as my thoughts on that, I don't believe that this will end up being a holdover as long as Bryce Harper and Manny Machado was. Because there seriously was a stint throughout the offseason where I thought that the baseball season was going to open up and those guys were not going to be on rosters because that's how long that was taking. But I'm glad Garrett Cole has come out and actually said this now because it gives him time to really take a huge thought process on this. Also to just get away from the game because right. they're coming off of a long, dueling, grueling season. Hard-fought World Series just came up short to the Washington Nationals. So it gives him a chance to really step back and process what he's going to do with the next steps of his baseball career and his life. And But I know Scott Boris is going to make sure that Garrett Cole gets well paid. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that I do know. And let me say this right now, simply as a Yankee fan, I know they plan on going after him and or Steven Strasburg. I don't know where they're going to get the money from to sign both of those guys, knowing that they have other guys that they're going to have to take care of in the future anyway, like in Aaron Judge and Aguilar Torres and Andrew Carr and guys like that. I don't know where they're going to get that money from, but as much as I want Garrett Cole in New York, I don't believe the best way for the Yankees to solve this is to break the bank on one guy. All right, let me let me uh, yeah let me add something to this if I may. Okay, oh, the, where are they going to get the money? They've got it. The question is, is how much do they want to go over the luxury tax? Mm-hmm. That, so I want to make sure I preface that. Unlike any other sport where you have a salary cap, you know, we all all three of us know there is none there. But remember, Hal Steinbrenner spends money differently than George Steinbrenner. Mm-hmm. So and yet, I, I like the way the Yankees organization is being run. You know, you don't have to worry about a managerial change every single year either in this new and improved age with the Yankees. So, didn't mean to interrupt you there, Xavier, but where they get the money is if they want to really, really spend it, they will, and they will take care of their player. Name too many players that the Yankees have ever wanted to keep that they don't get unless they outright sell them get away. The only one that really comes to mind to me, and I know you probably know who it is, but I'll say it anyway before you get to it, okay, is Robinson Cano. Ricky Henderson, too. Well, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. But Robinson Cano, you know, uh, went to Seattle. But the, whoever the Yankees want, they usually get them and they usually keep them. Go ahead, Xavier, continue on. Well, you know what, Scott? I'll preface those comments simply by saying thank you to Robinson Cano for doing that for the Yankees organization. <laughs> Because he simply just went on the decline every single year after that. Well, so true. I thank him for making that decision for the Yankees organization. Right. It was a hard day in 2013 when he made that decision. But I'll take it now considering how things have now gone for the Yankees and how things have gone for him, the Mariners, the Mets, and any anything else that he's done within that time. So the Yankees actually, you know, that was a blessing in disguise for them. And, yes, I agree, the money is there, but I'm going to say that I know that it's about 